Hey, what's going on? It's Cronus here. Um, decided to do some podcast on the way to Jiu-Jitsu. This way, it would basically guarantee you're going to get a Jits cast. <laughs> so, I've had a couple problems the past couple weeks of getting the Jits cast out. And uh, I figured I'm always, you know, still rolling, going to Jiu-Jitsu. Might as well just record on the way there. And if I can get a, a podcast in with... Uh, Mauricio, then I'll, I'll do that. But if not, then I'll, I'll just release this. Um, this way I can give you guys some more content and pretty much guarantee you every week um, getting something out there because I go to, to jiu-jitsu four times a week. So yeah, I figured at least one of those drives either to or from, I can record what it's like to, uh, you know, go into jiu-jitsu. So yeah, right now I just left my house. Um, I'm already ready to go. I got my pre-workout in. Uh, I'm taking... Uh, what do you call it? It's auto auto nutrition uh, amino energy. Um, I really like that one, and then I also mix it with uh, some keto canna. That way, I can stay in ketosis. So yesterday was Thanksgiving, and I knocked the shit out of my, my ketosis. So uh, I'll have to work pretty diligently to get back uh, into keto. Uh, but it, it shouldn't be that bad because I've done it a few times now. So you know, I'll just be uh, patient with my body, and uh, well, it should only take me two maybe three days to get back into ketosis, but um, when, when I decide to go back into ketosis, which hopefully it'll be on Monday, but but I don't know, so because I'm, I'm going to have to travel probably tomorrow, which is Sunday, or uh, Monday, I'm going to uh, Texas, and I'll talk more about why I'm going to Texas uh, a little bit later, um, but it's basically it's going to be a big uh, change in my life after I go to Texas, and so hopefully while I'm out there, I'll be able to roll and I'll do some more, uh, some more Jits cast. Hopefully I'll meet some, some other cool folks. I'll be able to talk to them, give you guys some more uh, guests, um, some more subjects to talk about. So, yeah. Um, one of the things I, uh, I wanted to do last week was talk to a gentleman named Israel Gomes. He was, uh, or he is, he's a black belt. He's one of Mauricio's friends um, from Brazil, and he's a, a leg lock guy. And so we had a, a really good leg lock seminar last Sunday, and it, as y'all may or may not know, I fucking love leg locks, but I'm only a blue belt, so I can only do some of them, um, and I, I could do other leg locks with, you know, depending on who I'm, who I'm rolling with, usually a brown or black belt, you know, I'll, I'll ask him beforehand if it's okay to, to, to attack legs, and then and then go from there. Um, the seminar was great, it, it led to a lot of really good attacks, but I really need to work on defense, because I, I noticed that when I'm attacking somebody's legs, uh, I find it difficult to hide my feet. I'm getting better at it, but it's still a problem. But, you know, I'm, I'm just a blue belt, so it's, it's one of those things I'm just I'm learning, you know, basically how to hide the feet better and, and, and also how to attack while, while hiding my feet. So that, that was one of the things that I'm working on. And um, Israel actually also had some really cool stuff with Guy that wasn't just leg lock centric. He had uh, some really cool uh, back takes from from side control, shit I've never even seen before. So it was uh, it was pretty neat, really informative seminar. So a lot of things that I really want to, uh, I guess, focus on and really develop as, as part of my game. Because right now I'm kind of in the rebuilding uh, stage of my game. Um, I, I've got a really solid um, side control game, uh, bottom game using half guard. Um, but I'm, I'm not very good uh, with taking the back. I'm not very good at... at uh, holding back control, and I'm still rather uh, susceptible to somebody taking my back um, sometimes, which I have to really work on, so, you know, it's not not perfect, but it's just shit I'm working on, so, just like anybody, you know, throughout your whole career of uh, doing jiu-jitsu, you should be trying to, to get better, so that's that's what I'm trying to do, but, you know, I'm still n- near the bottom, so it's, it's been kind of fun to, to work all this stuff out, um, and a couple other reasons why I've, I've been kind of missing some of the jizz casts is because I, I got injured. I think I, I told you I, I cut my hand really bad with a, with a sword, a fucking ridiculous injury because the sword literally fell into my hand. Um, but it didn't stop me from doing jiu-jitsu. I, I just rolled one-handed uh, for a little while. And then um, last week, um, somebody had me in an armbar, and he didn't hear me tap. So uh, I had to basically scream to, to, get, <laughs> to get him to hear me. And my arm popped uh, quite a few times, and it was uh, it was pretty painful. So it's my, my left arm. I mean, if it was my right arm, it actually wouldn't have been that bad because I'm used to um, rolling with one hand. It's using my left hand. So I've had uh, TFCC surgery, which is a, a, a wrist tendon 
and I also had that, you know, that freaking sword injury. Same thing on, on my right hand, so I'm used to, to rolling with just my left hand, but when my, my left arm was messed up, it was just like, well, fuck, my, my right arm isn't used to doing all the things it used to anymore, so, but it's all right, you know, I still, uh, I still work through it, I'm still rolling, I'm still drilling, you know, trying to get better. I actually like when um, I have to roll one-handed. I know it's kind of weird, but it actually helps uh, even out my, my body as far as um, I'm right-handed, and so if my right hand gets injured, I have to use my left hand more, so that, that definitely brings um, more balance to my game. I can attack both sides a lot better now. And also, balance is another thing. If you only have one hand, it's, it's, it's obviously hard to post on your right. You can't post on your right hand, so you have to really learn how to, how to balance a lot better and, and know like where your, your opponent's uh, weight is at all times. And, and also knowing when uh, it's timing. A lot of it is timing for me when I was uh, rolling one-handed, is to know exactly when to, to exert you know, some energy and when, and when not to. Because sometimes when you get stuck, I've seen a lot of white belts just fucking freak out and just blow their load just trying to get out of side control. And it's like, dude, just accept the position and uh, wait for an opening instead of trying to create your own opening. Because to be honest, if you're a white belt, you're probably not gonna create your own opening. Um, I know I couldn't as a white belt. It was, it was super hard when I first started. Um, I was a bigger guy. I was over 200 pounds. Um, I was strong, but obviously, if you, being that large, my, my gas tank was was not that great. So what I would do is, when somebody got me on my back, is I would freak out and then try to to get them off me as soon as possible. And I'd just be wasting energy the whole time. And uh, yeah, I've definitely learned to uh, to conserve energy now. And uh, I also, you know, recommend when I use on a when I roll with white belts and they start freaking out, just you know, hey man, take your time take a breath because usually when you're freaking out a lot of people hold their breath and they just get even more tired which is which is really weird um, it's kind of one of those natural reactions like when you freak out you just you don't breathe normally so if you just you know stay calm breathe normally conserve energy and, and wait for an opening and uh, yeah it'll come i mean your opponent probably isn't going to sit there and just hold you in side control for you know forever so he's got to do something he's got to usually go for a submission or, or advance and sometimes you just got to wait for that um, i know it kind of sucks but sometimes that's what you got to do so, yeah, as, as you can see, if I put this video up, I'm wearing uh, a Nuaza rash guard. I fucking love their uh, rash guards. I'm wearing the one that looks like a, a Galaxy right now. It's one of my, my favorite rash guards. And no, I'm not sponsored by Nuaza. I just fucking like their shit. <laughs> I'm not sponsored by anybody right now for this podcast. So, yeah, st still a pretty pretty small podcast, but I, I enjoy doing them. And people that listen, they, they give me some, some pretty p positive feedback. And when I miss... Uh, when I miss a podcast, miss a week, and they, they get pissed <laughs> and let me know. So, you know, I know it's really important to uh, to have content every week. I, that's what I've learned from doing my other podcast called Black and the Black Times Infinity. I think we've only missed uh, one week. Um, I think it was in, in near the beginning of the podcast, and that was it. And we've been doing that podcast for over a year. We've been gradually adding in more and more content uh, into that podcast. So that, that's been great. That's what I'm going to try to do here and try to retain, uh, you know, my, my listeners and, and try to add on to it by by keeping a solid schedule and giving you guys context. I know it probably pisses people off and I just just miss a week and I don't give you guys an excuse. So so sorry again, but, you know, I'm doing my due, dil due diligence now to, to keep these coming out. So um, what's been happening since my last podcast? Well, I know we've had a couple of jiu-jitsu tournaments. Uh, EBI 9 happened. Um, in between that time, and that was a lot of fun to watch. Uh, EBI 9, which is the Eddie Bravo Invitational, number 9, it was the, I think it was light heavyweights, it was supposed to be, I think it was 205 or something like that, maybe 180 something, I can't remember. I know it was larger guys, because uh, it had to have been two, I think either 180 or, or 205, something like that. But it had, what was that guy's name? It's really good, Fanny Magalish, he was in it. I know he's a bigger guy. And it also had uh, Gary Tonin. Gary Tonin replaced uh, Eddie, uh, not Eddie, Eddie uh, Cummings. He replaced uh, Gordon Ryan. Gordon Ryan and Eddie Cummings, along with Gary Tonin, they're part of the Donovan Death Squad. And they've been uh, on a tear lately for pretty much all jiu-jitsu tournaments. But uh, EBI, <laughs> they've been, they have basically all the belts. So it's been pretty amazing to watch that, that their team uh, pick apart their opponents with leg locks and now they're you know they're they're showing more of their game with taking their backs and, and you know going for rear chokes and stuff like that so it's been it's been really exciting to watch them uh roll and i've been really 
paying attention to how they how they take their people's backs. And they're doing that that straight jacket back control, which is which is pretty neat. I've been trying to do it, but I have to work on my uh, my hip mobility because it's hard to uh, to get that straight jacket back take when uh, you try to hook one of your legs around your opponent's arm from the back. I'm sorry, that sound is my uh, radar detector. <laughs> like I said, I'm driving, so. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's hard to, to, to hook somebody's arm from the back when you don't have very good hip mobility. Um, well, my, my left hip is far more mobile than my right, but I'm, I'm working on them both to try to try to work on my hip mobility. It, it will also help with my with my triangles. So, um, but yeah, so uh, I think uh, man, Gary Tonin was like one of the lightest guys in EBI nine. I think he was the lightest guy, and, and he took the uh, took the belt. So yeah. It was pretty exciting to watch him win. He didn't uh, submit everybody like he like he normally does, but he still um, showed his uh, you know his prowess with uh, with jiu-jitsu and fighting much much larger guys. So it was uh, it was pretty pretty exciting to watch. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to EBI 10. That's going to be I believe 135, and that's the belt that um, what's the guy's name? Not Richie Martinez. It's his brother. Um, Gio Martinez. Gio Martinez has that, and uh, he's he's exciting to watch too. When he, when he gets in this position called the truck, it's where he basically it's it's kind of hard to explain. I'll try to put it in the description of the video, but basically you have control of both of your opponent's legs. One of one of the legs you have locked down, and the other one you're holding onto his toes, and you have a, a lot of options from there. And uh, Gio Martinez is, is a wizard at, at uh, the truck and finishing from the truck. If you guys ever watched uh, the Men of Morris when. Uh, Eddie Bravo was facing uh, Horler Gracie, and he had that really weird submission called the uh, the vaporizer. Um, he got into the vaporizer from the truck, and uh, it was a it was a really uh, slick submission that uh, Horler didn't tap to. I don't know how he didn't tap, but uh, he didn't tap to it. Um, but it's it's it, it's a it's a pretty cool uh, unconventional way to, to control somebody that uh, I like watching uh, a Geo. Uh, the way that he enters into the truck and the way he finishes from the truck. Is, uh, is pretty exciting. So I'm looking forward to watching him in the next tournament. And I think uh, Eddie Cummings is also going to be in that tournament, so that's going to be uh, something to watch too. Because Eddie Cummings is a wizard with heel hooks, and now he's uh, taking backs now. And that's that's going to be a, another cool tournament to watch. And I believe it's going to be in Mexico, which is funny because it's something that Eddie Bravo wanted. Eddie Bravo wanted to do for, for like the longest time. He wanted to have the Eddie Bravo Invitational um, start in Mexico on on Mexican TV, but he ended up doing it uh, just on pay per view. Um, in America at the Orpheum Theater, so now he's finally getting into that Mexican market because he says that uh, I don't know anything about the Mexican market, but he said that uh, the Mexican market is a great market for for jiu-jitsu and, and submission early tournaments. So, so we'll see how how that goes with that tournament. Um, it should be should be pretty neat. Um, it's it's a good weight class. Should be should be pretty fast fights. It should be a lot of finishes for that tournament. Uh, Eddie Bravo Invitationals they usually have pretty high finishes for all, all their matches. There's hardly there's never a draw because of the way that they do their um, their overtime rules, where basically um, in overtime, if, if nobody submits somebody within you know ten minutes, you either get to start on your opponent's back, or they start on your back, or you start in uh, in the spider web, which is uh, basically an arm bar position, and then you go from there. And if you get the finish, um, let's say if you're in round one, if you take somebody's back, you get the rear naked choke, your opponent gets a chance to go on your back to finish you. If they don't finish you, then you won. But if they do finish you, um, then you have to go to the next round. Or if either of you finishes each other and you escape, then uh, what they do is they go through three rounds, and if you all escape in those three rounds, then they basically what they do is they have the time of who escaped the fastest. And whoever escaped the fastest um, will win. So I guess it's, it's not really a draw, but it, it's not really a finish, but it's not a draw either. I mean, somebody is a definitive winner, so that's kind of cool. And, there, and there's, no, uh, there's no point system in it, so I, I kind of like it. So people take a lot more chances with submissions in that style of tournament. So, so yeah, I think that's, uh, that's going to be it for now. CHP guy really hasn't pulled me over. I got pulled over the other day for my fucking tinted windows. I don't know if you can see it in this video, but my side tinted windows, um, I'm pretty sure it's from the factory. This is the way I got the car. You know, I'm driving a, a BMW X5, and uh, first time I ever got pulled over for fucking tinted windows, and I'm like, dude, it's not even tinted. You can, like, you can see through them. Like, if you look at this video, you can easily see, the, see through these windows. Um, I'm pretty sure it's below uh, 35%, but the officer tried to tell me that you can't have any tinted windows, so I'm like, what the fuck? So, um, I gotta fight that shit. I was pretty pissed about it. I think it's one of those things of uh, driving while black, first time ever. And uh, I, I never, I've never had a problem with cops before, a lot of my friends are cops, but 
I just couldn't believe that petty shit of, of pulling me over for tinted windows that you can obviously see through. It's fucking dumb. But anyway, all right, I'm, I'm gonna bring this uh, this little vlog or podcast, whatever the fuck you want to call it. I'm gonna bring it to an end. Uh, I'm pretty close to, to where I need jujitsu at at Koa Fitness. So yeah. Uh, keep on rolling and uh, hopefully you guys like this one if you guys like it uh, definitely please uh, comment either on SoundCloud or on, or on iTunes and if you can't do me a, a huge favor is rate me on iTunes I'm not a huge Apple fan but fucking everybody is on on iTunes and the biggest podcasts are on there and that's probably the, the biggest distributor of podcasts is on iTunes so please uh, rate me on iTunes um, if, if you can so yeah appreciate it uh, peace out